Okay, so uh, I'm luckily enough uh, to be sat here with Robin Firth. Um, do you want to just tell us uh, what you do, Robin? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, my name's Robin Firth. I'm a writer. I have worked with Stephen King as his research assistant for many years. Um, I do the plotting for the stories of Dark Tower, and I work with an amazing group. Peter David does scripting, and we have a lot of artists, Jay Lee and Richard Eisenhoff, and then um, many others, Sean Phillips, we've been Luke Ross, so we've been very lucky. So I, I was going to start off with uh, how the comics were actually firstly received after the seven novels that actually you know, yes. uh, Stephen wrote, but just on the idea of uh, moving from the, the books to the comics, um, obviously, how, how involved were you and Stephen in actually being able to choose who you would work with? Oh, for the comics? Yeah. Because um, obviously, visually, it's really important oh, it's, to get it Yeah, down. exactly. What happened was, um, I, I think if you go right back, Joe Quesada at Marvel was asked, if you get to work with one novelist, who would you like to bring into Marvel? And he said Stephen King. So um, one of Steve's agents heard that and was like, Ah, okay, got in touch with Steve, got Steve in touch with Marvel. And they said, well, what would you like to do? And he, he said, Dark Tower. I really want to see Dark Tower. And what I want you to do is tell the story um, from uh, the end, of, well, cover Wizard and Glass, mm -hmm. which is the story of Roland's love and loss and Hambry and finding the sphere and, and that. Um, and then go right up to the Battle of Jericho Hill. And then Marvel, they pulled the artists they thought would be really great. Steve said, yeah, I want Robin involved. She was working with me for years, which was great for me. Cause, and Peter David as well, who was working with um, Marvel. Yeah. So that's how the team, it was like a joint effort pulling people together. Brilliant. And I mean, it's seven, seven books, which are yes. not short reading. The shortest is no. actually The Gunslinger. Exactly. They get bigger with favorite. each book. Yeah, yeah exactly. I love The Gunslinger yeah. too. I mean, as I, I, think I it's said fantastic. to you before, like the first one that I read and then a few yeah. years back, I like got straight into it yeah. again, which was fantastic. I mean, how do you personally feel um, that having so many books has translated into, uh, you know, the, the comics? Because Stephen King is just renowned for his description. Like, yes. there's nothing left for the person's imagination. Yes. You can't help but have the image yes. burned into your mind. Yeah. Uh, going from that to actually, you know, cutting out the dialogue, the description, to just imagery. How, yeah. how hard did you find that? It was a long process. I mean, the fact that he describes things so well really helps. And the fact, it's interesting, those um, books that are so huge, he often gives the nuggets of other stories. Like, Roland will start to tell or just tell a little bit about another tale which yeah. has been great for us because we can pull those stories and and weave them into the narrative but not great for when you're actually just exactly the the book and you wait for yeah, the next like, one to oh be no written. i want more yeah <laughs> but um so especially when we first started with gunslinger born and we had big wizard and glass to bring down that took a long long time because yeah. how do you take this amazing story and all these interwoven tales and bring it down to a single storyline mm. Um, so we had to cut out a lot of the backstories and really focus. With um, the Wizard in Glass, the adaptation is The Gunslinger Born. That's the one that's, that's um, most direct. But even there, because um, by the time someone reads Wizard in Glass, they've already read The Gunslinger, yeah. you know, so they know that back history. So we had to weave things in, like the opening scene in The Gunslinger Born, where Roland is um, doing the lesson in falconry with Court and yeah. his tet mates. That actually comes from, from the gunslinger. Because I thought we need to have something to tell people about the history of Gilead and Roland's training. And you need to see Court. Because that's so much a part of the books. I mean, I, I stumbled across the, uh, the comics. Um, I, it's the, the, the road. That oh, I bought, yeah. yes. Um, so I was like, oh, brilliant. So I bought those and I started reading them. And I hadn't actually finished. Um, and then, of course, like uh, as you were saying, you brought the Crimson King in yes. um, a lot earlier. So I had to stop reading it. I was like, oh, I really want to carry on reading them, but I really don't want yes, to Yes, exactly. Because <laughs> like, those come up later in the novels. Yeah, it's so true. It's so you have to wait. To it's very good. Yet. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I think if Stephen King ever does go back and rework, I bet you'll see more of the Crimson King in those earlier novels because yeah. he brings it in and the, the, the gunslinger. The idea of the Crimson King, I mean, it's uh, just something about the name as well. That just oh, exactly. Kind of yeah, it's very you, creepy, and yeah. it just it, it even the name starts to generate images in your mind. Did you get a peek at the, any of the images of the Crimson King in the? I did. 
Um, yeah, very scary. Yeah, and and also completely different to how I imagined yes. it as well. So it was yeah. it was interesting. I, I didn't that was Jay Lee's actually, crea- yeah. yeah, yeah, based on the books. And what's really interesting as well, talking about the Stephen King multiverse, um, fans of it. We'll, mm. we'll see echoes, you know, of, of this monstrous but he, creature. I mean, he, he does do that. His, his pieces are completely different, yeah. but you can see that everything is, like, recycled yeah, in exactly. a different way as well. I mean, it's all, they weave in and out of each other. Yeah. So the universe is, it kind of stretches its tentacles to use a kind of a Lovecraftian vision, do go out. I mean, how, how did you find that the comics were received? But have, have they been popular? Yeah, or? people have been really, really supportive of them. And I know a lot of people had doubts to begin with, long-time Dark Tower fans. Mm. Um, and I think people have their favorites, some comics they really love, and then some, you know, they'll think, oh, you know, kind of like with the books, you know, I love this one, and then, you know, this one I, I liked, but then that one I really it's, liked. It's so. also refreshing as well, because you're not kind of bombarded with words. It is just a different form yes. of imagery, which I found, you know, as soon as I saw it, I was like, the, my first instinct was, wow, that's ace. Yeah. But I can see why some people could actually have their kind of, the, the backs up a bit about the fact that, well, no, this is, you know. Exactly. Novel, oh, exactly. Because people do visualize it. Yeah. You know, you, you see the characters so vividly, just like you were saying. Yeah, definitely. So and for Roland me, is such a exactly. Common, I mean, he's just amazing yeah, and, and when they do the films, it's going to be tough to cast Roland because the person's going to have to become Roland. If this is very true. For some reason, I had Billy Bob Thornton. But oh, isn't that interesting? <laughs> but I, I don't see how that could oh, really wow. work. Oh, uh, wow. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> with a stronger jawline. Yes. <laughs> he must have it. Um, obviously, there's like limits to what you could actually do. Did you find that it you could work within them quite well, uh, translating from books to the actual. Yes, yes. And then Stephen King gave us a lot of leeway, and he's been really supportive, which is great. Because after um, Gunslinger Born, we really um, had to take the bits and pieces of stories that Stephen had hinted at in his novels and weave them together up to the Battle of Jericho Hill. And we knew exactly what was going to happen in Jericho Hill. Um, We knew about the fall of Gilead and who has to die and how they have to die and how the city will fall. But there was a lot of weaving together of other things and all constantly making sure he was okay with it. Yeah, of Which course, is always like scary. To, yeah. you know, no, <laughs> like thinking, oh, that's an amazing think. idea, but then having to take it. Exactly. To, uh, and, yeah, yeah, make sure he's okay with it. That's always the scary I mean, thing. Just but back, he's really good with support. I mean, he, he must be, considering he's got yes. so much people are dying to translate his yes. works into film or comic. Yes. Or, uh, and he is a great thing. Did you know that um, any young filmmaker, I'm pretty sure he's still doing it, um, if you give him a dollar, you can take one of his stories and adapt it. He'll oh, really? give you the rights, yeah. That's fantastic. Which is really good because it gives, you know, young well, he's got filmmakers. So many a, out there, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's up. But yeah, but it's it's really good because it gives people the, you know, the proper rights to do a film adaptation. I think a lot of film students have. I think Frank Darwin did start yes. Out. Yes. I mean, uh, just a, yeah. a personal question really in terms of your interpretation um in obviously in uh, the late books Stephen King actually brings himself into it yes what are your thoughts on that because I was a bit in two minds about how a lot of people were because they I think a lot of people I don't know if if you felt this way but a lot of people felt it kind of breaks the spell yeah yeah and for me when I read it what I found amazing was um that sense of it being um his world and his vision and, and how involved he was. And I thought it was really interesting that he had his characters come in right at the point where he was dying. I mean, he, he when he was hit by that car, um, he you know, that, that your life and, and the possibility yeah. of your own death and mortality all is there. And I thought it was really fascinating that what brought him back were his characters in the, in the book version. And I think there's a kind of symbolic truth to that because oh, yeah, that story remained yeah. untold. And uh, so I found it really powerful. But I know a lot of people, you know, they're, they're really mixed feelings about that. But personally, I found it really powerful. And as a writer, to have that um, someone whose work I respect so much to talk about the characters coming to him, that's the kind of thing I always oh, love. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, the reality of that. I mean, it, I mean, it was mixed feelings. It's, as it was but I know exactly. And a lot of people talked about that too yeah. at the end. I think it was the fitting it was yes. fitting but I, I mean i was reading it thinking how on earth he is going to actually exactly. create an engine that is faithful to what he's created exactly oh i know and seven it was a novels bit genius yeah because you know just yeah. infinite <laughs> that was true and it'll have to go through again and again exactly. it's kind of 
out for Dvor Roland, what torture as well to go back through and have to relive all these things. But with memory or not um, memory. Yeah, exactly. The, the small idea that yeah. he's learning from each exactly. time. Exactly. And it's, enough? it's interesting because in the 2003 rewrite, um, a lot of people have read the, the original 1983, but the rewrite, he makes reference to that at the beginning with kind of shimmering of Roland almost remembering things, not quite remembering things. Okay. So it's interesting. He even starts to rewrite with that idea. Yeah, I mean, I do love the fact that he started writing um, and all in this idea that, okay, I've got so many ideas, but I don't want to rip off Lord of the yes. Rings. Yes, <laughs> And it, he is like, he would go back to it when he actually felt it yes. was his own, really. Yeah. Uh, just again, like the recycling of characters and ideas yeah. and, uh, you know, like Callahan. Yes, uh, and, exactly. And just, you know, I think it's great. And the idea yeah. of vampires. And yeah. A beautiful twist on that, I think. Yes. Well, not beautiful, but you know. No, I know exactly what you mean. Exactly. So, exactly. I know but exactly. But I am mean. rambling again. So I'll no, go you're not. You're doing a great job. Um Oh, oh, right, okay. Okay, uh, just really quickly, just um, you, you did mention, you know, you would like to have delved in a bit more with the female characters. Yes. Is there anything that will be happening with that, do you think? I'm hoping at, at the, in the, you know, the, the stories to come. Um, but with the character of Eileen, that was kind of my way to bring in the female gunslinger because in the, in the novels we have Susanna Dean, who's such a powerful character. So with the um, graphic novels, I really wanted to bring in that force because I didn't think it would be you know, fair to the readers who hadn't read the books not to see that other force. So we have Eileen. But in, you know, hopefully someday we will be able to get to the present Tet. And Susanna Dean is great. Yeah. And no one will mess with her. <laughs> no, so she's a really true. powerful female character. And I suppose, really, because we've got to wrap it up, um, the, the film, obviously, you know, yes. we've, we've touched on it as exciting. much as, yeah, yeah, it really is. I just can't believe it. Um, my worry is um, that there's not got to be, you know, there's so much that you need to capture. Is it going to be um, from the books or would you say it's drawing more from the comics? They're really trying to get the whole world. They're really working hard at that to, yeah. to weave in um, the films. I think they're really, they're looking at Steve's novels, which is great. And um, they're working very hard at how do you do that? How do you, because the books, you're picking up the information as you go, and how do you get people into that world? So I think you'll really enjoy it. They're working really hard. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. And have you enjoyed Thought Bubble? Is it your first Wonderful. time here? Oh, no, second time, and I love Thought Bubble. It's and great. Have you experienced to be the, the International Film Festival at all? I haven't yet. I want to. I just, um, I've been here in the oh, no, comic course, book section, yeah. but I want to because that's just fantastic that you have that here. It's wonderful. Well, it's been amazing meeting you. It's been you. wonderful. So thank you for I really your time. enjoyed it. Take care. Yeah, wonderful. Too.